At that point, I was about to uh, say adios for the night, head off, and uh, his back was to me. And as I say, he was stripped to to his pants, and on the right side, along his spine, there were these two gigantic scars. I said, what in the world are those about? And that's when he proceeded to tell me. I already knew that he was his grandfather, that he came from a a family of, of, at least on the grandfather's side of of, uh, Comanches. And we had discussed, because I knew something about the Comanche language and how unusual it was, is that it's one of the few languages that's uh, half-whispered and half-spoken. And that was when he remarked that uh, when he would visit him, he was always hearing these... uh, I could always hear them whispering. I wonder what that was with my grandmother. I always wonder what that was about. And um, now you may have heard about uh, Native Americans, that uh, the Navajos, for instance, that were the people in the South Pacific who uh, were sending out signals that the Japanese couldn't uh, uh, decipher. The code, the code, supposedly that they couldn't break because there was no uh, no way they had had, had access to, to that to that to that language, so they could just talk away, give all kinds of information out over the uh, the walkie-talkies. That's uh, OPs calling in signal fire and stuff like that. Well, it turned out that this guy had a job similar to that, except (laughs) it was a hell of a lot more dangerous. At the start of the war, there was a group of them of about 100 and, I forget, maybe 120, something like that. Very small. Anyway, they told them. It was one of those they gathered them up. I guess that they were all some kind of just what we talked, what I've said about that the that they needed them for uh, to, to be sending out signals that couldn't be deciphered. They didn't know that that was what they were going to be used for. They just when they were gathered there, they said, uh, "If uh, you don't have to do this, it's going to be very dangerous." And uh, but if you say yes, then there's no backing out. Well, it turned out that their job. And so far as I know, this has never, ever, ever been told about. I've never read about it in, in, in any kind of a history of World War II. If you can find it anywhere on the net, let me know. I, it, it's just not there. It's maybe the, this may be the only instance now of anyone who even knows about it. At any rate, there, there they were, these, this small group of people. And uh, their job was to go to these islands when they were still held by the Japanese, to slip in rubber boats, things like that, I guess, however they got there. He told me it was in, in, the, in the boats, but I'm, I would imagine some of them actually were maybe even swam in like frogmen. I don't know. In other words, he, uh, all I know is I, I do recall his telling me all they gave us was a K-bar and a knife. That's what, they, that's what they landed on those islands with. And their job for the first two or three days before the landings began was to undergo their own fire and be sending out signals. And I'm pretty sure he told me it was about four islands that he had landed on. But at at this point, the reason why I was 
Well, I mean, I never drank, never did drugs or anything like that, but there was a host of, the, obviously, these people around here who were alcoholics and everything else, and this guy was obviously trying, and this was in the 80s, so it's ever since, what, 45, that he had been trying to recover and this and that, and was still beaten down to the bone, basically, from his experiences, and it wasn't. They were, they, were, they were so harrowing that it was not, not hard to believe that uh, uh, what it had done to, to, to be on those islands that many and knowing your, the incomings were going to be splattering all around you and shaking you up and killing your whomever you were landed had landed with and maybe you too till till the uh, till the forces arrived. I, it's just incredible that that that, uh, that they did this. And um, then the this is where I'll break off and tell you uh, the rest of the story. <laughs> 